One thing, I didn't talk about the dreams that I had. I don't think. Ugh. Because my dreams are getting so erased. Like one night, I had just like the name Reality Winner came to me at 1.40 a.m. Um, and I have different thoughts about what that might be. I think it works on about three different levels. Okay, on the night of April 7th, okay, I got this brief image, and I mean, like, part of me wants to just not even write something like this down because it's so bizarre and out of nowhere, but the fact that it is bizarre and out of nowhere and brief and flickering and all of that, or mostly that it's bizarre and out of nowhere, means that m maybe there's something to it. Like, why would this come to you? Why would this image come to you? You know, this is sort of like right before I'm trying to go to sleep and everything, and then I see this flicker of an image. And this is a girl with red hair, shoulder length or longer, like straight red hair, bangs, maybe wearing green or green and blue plaid, looks Irish. Um, and I kind of woke up after that and I thought of a couple people that that could be that I've known over the years, but, um, then this morning I looked at it and I thought, oh, well, that's kind of like me at a certain point in my life. Um, I don't know. Then 9.42 PM, I write office. I think this says, um, what I translated as earlier later this morning later was office gift office characters linked to singing but it looks like office gift people implanted wow it's weird that i missed that over there um it looks like it might say office gift people implanted or office gets people implanted that's what it looks like to me now. And I was obviously very sleepy because um, of how the writing looks. And then, offers characters linked to singing. So the second part of this seems like it could make sense because I already have, you know, identified um, the character of Michael Scott in being maybe in some ways, you know, you can tell that there's some references going on to Mike Patton. So therefore, then, if you think about, I don't know, like, I, it would help, it would be something maybe that's an inside joke of people that know certain people and certain situations way better than I do. But, you know, the character who plays Creed is Creed, and he was, you know, um, in a band in the 60s, and, um, I keep forgetting the name and all of that, but, um, let's see, what else? And so then there's Andy, the acapella singer, and, um, so, yeah, I have a feeling that that might work on that level, that people in the office all might somehow in some way match some kind of singer or something. Maybe, I don't know. Okay, so then, um, <laughs> I get an image of propped up trees and a list of things done by the right. And so that's kind of what like the rest of the night seems like it is. One of those nights where there's dreams going on and I can't remember them and this is it. Um, overnight. Um, lists of stuff re related to right side spying on left. I think I wrote overnight because it was like throughout the night, lists of stuff related to spy, right side spying on left. And then as, right as I was waking up, because I, I think partly because n not much had come from the dreams or anything, I don't know, I get this image of sticks, like a vision of sticks. And at the same time, the middle finger on my left hand was twinging. So, I think that the middle finger on the left hand, you know, I mean, assuming that I'm to trust the fact that any of this, you know, any of it, but especially um, the different twinges that I get on my body, um, 
but I think the left fing middle finger on the right hand relates directly to us as we're sort of implanted and trapped. So then the middle finger on the left hand, I think, I think relates to people who are in that same position from the other side. So that might be somebody like possibly Mike Patton, maybe. Okay, well that was it on dreams. I will say that, you know, it's, this here talks about one side spying on the other, and um, that's really important that to allow or excuse somebody spying on somebody else, especially that someone that's really empowered to spy and distribute spy-related materials, including, you know, disinformation and, um, you know, all the weapons that spies have. That's not really fair if the others, you know, because it's not fair. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just like, um, it's a, the, you know, if, if I were to try to spy, like to, to form a spy core of some sort, there's just no way, like, it would be like a matched head-to-head -head kind of thing. I mean, we're talking about going up against intelligence agencies in this super generational um, situation. Um, I mean, you know, by super, I mean by that it extends mul multiple generations of people doing this. And these people have a lot of money and power and influence. So it doesn't make any sense to try to match them at their own game. What makes sense is to try to actually bring everything into line with what makes sense in terms of ethics and, um, you know, the law, <laughs> which is related to ethics. Um, you know, I mean, I laugh, but it's not, I'm serious. Why not? Um, and then, you know, then you've got at least a chance of something being somewhat balanced or at least looking, being able to see where the imbalance is and all that kind of stuff. So anyhow, um, spying is a, um, we have like many, many spy agencies in this country alone and then spy agencies around the world. And then probably there's secret spy agencies that aren't even official spy agencies and, independent spy agencies and all kinds of different spy agencies and we don't talk about spying very much and like what it is and what it means and um what's good about it what's bad about it and all that kind of stuff i don't i don't think i've ever had that kind of discussion in school or at all um but it sure seems to go on a lot so we should talk about it more <laughs>